You are listening to a free version of the Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Monday, August 30th, 2017. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the four-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, it's actually the five-time award-winning Majority Report. The perp walks begin. Manafort, Gates, and Papadopoulos. Meanwhile, Jared Kushner under a separate investigation in Maryland for running atrocious housing projects. And worse than collusion, Puerto Rico moves to dump whitefish energy company completely unqualified to bring electricity to the island where 80% of the population remains without energy. Meanwhile, Betsy DeVos will roll back that nasty debt forgiveness given to defrauded students. The ACA open enrollment starts on Wednesday. It is totally under assault. And Republicans wheel and deal on taxes. They plan to drop their plan on Wednesday. Manafort won't help things. And the Uranium One story falls apart. Don't know why we need to talk about it, but some people feel compelled to. So we will definitively wrap that one up. Yep, like all my wife's crimes. And congratulations to 2016. CO2 concentration hit an 800,000 year high. At least my wife's not president. And those uh, NYPD cops who claimed that they had consensual sex with an 18 year old girl in their custody have now been charged with rape. All that and more on today's program, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it is, uh, it's Mueller Monday today. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Some really tough stuff. (laughs) Um, And uh, we will go through uh, this story in in a moment. You should know that... um, this is obviously not the only story, okay? This Mueller stuff is, uh, it's important. It it has, I think, a lot more importance uh, politically in the short term than it does legally. But we will get to that in a moment. But I do want to make it clear. There are other stories that are important. For instance, Fox News this morning is the only, seems to be the only network out there, okay, to its credit, that is not getting all caught up in this first round of arrests by special counsel Mueller. And so, to their credit, they are also uh, the only ones, as far as I can tell, who are talking about this story. Cheeseburger emoji causing a frenzy online. We've been talking about it all morning. Can you see what's wrong with this picture? The cheese is underneath the hamburger. Who does that? Compared to competitors, Google appears to be the only tech company putting cheese below the patty. Google CEO Sundar Pichai responding on Twitter saying, quote, we'll drop everything else we are doing and address on Monday. The folks can agree on the correct way to do this. So we wanted to hear your comments. And Gerald says, location of the cheese on a hamburger is based on which side of the equator you are on. What? South, it goes down (laughs) under. Okay. All right. Rhonda writes, I worked at a restaurant in my younger days, and we were taught to put the lettuce under the burger to keep the bun from getting soggy. Interesting. And according to John, he says, as long as the cheese is between the two pieces of bread, it works for me. 
So I think people That's aren't true. It all tastes the same. Ended by it. Way to get to the bottom of that, Jillian. Good work. Yeah, You're welcome. Indeed. Uh, hey, Janice. <laughs> I actually, in, you know, it looks bad for Google. I Googled it, and it showed that the cheese should be on top of the burger. Why don't we have cheeseburgers to try it out? I'm for that. Let's. <laughs> there you I go. I don't know how to respond to that. And uh, also, uh, you should know, I, I like, their, uh, their, 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 their crawl at this point says, Garcetti said in a tweet Sunday, I'm passionate about my city. My bah, 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 bah. They, uh, hey, Sam, I bet you <laughs> like... I don't know. What is it? Feta on your burger because you're a gay, lesbian, European? Am not, I right? Not paying much attention Mola's to old news. the uh, yeah, Mola's stuff was old already news, the old news by, uh, by 9 a.m. this morning or 10 a.m. Uh, folks, holiday business gifting is fast approaching. This year, choose gifts that are simple to give and get. Choose Omaha Steaks. They got a huge variety. They got premium steaks to skillet meals. Super easy to order. We got a um, a shipment in here. What was it? Was it like last? Was it around Father's Day? I think it was around Father's Day. It took about three seconds. I've never seen the viciousness around uh, this office with people who are jump uh, uh, jump for that. It was intense, and you were like, "It's Father's Day. It's Father's, father's Day. You guys haven't done anything." Rough children, you can get off the surprise, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> it's true. I think I like, I think I took everything and made you guys just get the sides. Yes. But for just my listeners, you can enjoy special holiday pricing on the perfect business gift. It's an ideal holiday gift for your clients, employers, or partners. <laughs> <laughs> well, also employees. But it'll be a great gift for your employer. The perfect business gift includes four bacon-wrapped trip-tip steaks, four Omaha steak burgers, four gourmet franks. So I'll love the ducks. Uh, two boneless pork chops, four kielbasa sausages, four free caramel apple tartlets. Oh, God. Plus, you get free shipping. This exclusive holiday gift package is only $59.99. Go to omahasteaks.com, type report in the search bar. They got that funky way of doing it. It's a secret way. It's actually, I, I like it. I'm not saying it's a bad way. No, I know. It's a secret it's, it's way. Super, it's secret. You go into the search bar. You type report. Then you choose the perfect business gift. Again, visit omahasteaks.com, enter code report in the search bar. Send or experience this exclu- exclusive gift package for only fifty nine ninety nine, and it ships for free. You All know, right. I have actually bought you a gift, my capitalist exploiter. Do you remember that? I bought you a nice gift once. You did? It just, just occurred to me. What yeah. is it, a bottle? Did you give me a bottle of booze? I got you a really nice Trinidadian rum. On uh, after one of my trips to Trinidad, I did. I drink that all in one night. I feel like I drank I that all in one night like, during you, the I election. I gave it to you, and you're like, "Thanks." And then a couple days later, you came in. And you're like, oh, "It was good." Yeah, I think Thank I hit you. that. That was good. Um. All right, let's get to uh, these uh, the Manafort stories. I mean, it turns out that the there's a lot going on today, and uh. Two people were arrested today, Paul Manafort and um, I guess what you would call his his, uh, consigliere, Rick Gates. I don't know. Understudy. Understudy. Mentee. Mentee. But the real story, the the more interesting story might even be this third guy, Papadopoulos, who was a low-level foreign policy advisor remember during the the campaign jeff sessions ran the foreign policy shop of the trump administration and he's also the guy who brought in carter page jeff sessions so or presumably uh, oversaw carter page i should say and um papadopoulos apparently pled guilty to lying to federal investigators like a month ago. I don't know if he actually pled out or what, but he's been working with Mueller's team. That's important. Let's put a, um, 
a pin in that for a moment. So Manafort was indicted by a federal grand jury, I guess, on Thursday or Friday, the 27th, whatever day that was. The indictment contains 12 counts. Conspiracy against the United States, which sounds a lot more dramatic than it is. That's actually when you just basically commit a federal crime on some level. That's not as sort of nefarious as it sounds. Conspiracy to launder money. Apparently they're talking about like some $14, $15 million that he uh, laundered. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unregistered agent of a foreign principal. He's been doing that sort of thing, think, think basically since the 80s. You, well, I think for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. False and mislead a FARA statements, which basically um, are similar charges. Uh, false statements, seven counts of failure to file reports of foreign bank and financial accounts. So basically they've rolled him up on all sorts of uh, financial improprieties, money laundering, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not... I am not, um, and I think Rick Gates has the exact same 12 indictments. They were both involved in this. I feel like Gates might find out that, like, because I think Gates is, was only like three or four million. I guess Manafort was more than 18 million. I get the feeling Gates is going to find out, like, hey, wait a second. You told me you only laundered like seven million. Well, I thought we were partners in that there Ukrainian <laughs> hey, <man>. operation. Hey, <laughs> you hold on one goddamn second. You oil the Italian? So I imagine most people are familiar with who Manafort is, was. He had been representing uh, the Ukrainian government, or a specific leader in the Ukrainian government, for an extended period of time. He came on to the campaign in... Um, I think it was April or March, first as basically a delegate counter, more or less, and then as the chairman, uh, the the manager, the campaign chairman, manager of the campaign, I should say, and was there, I think, until about August. I, I got to say, talk about regretting a decision, because... Manafort had been under investigation, I think, as early as 2012 because of money dealings. And they had closed the investigation on him. And they reopened it, I think, because he was so prominent. So one theory I've heard is that there was a lot of money owed to him by some of these uh, clients. And so he took the gig with Trump to basically be like, hey, I still have clout. Like, you should pay out. Which oh, that's interesting. Sense. Yeah. That's interesting. So it's just total greed. Total greed. <laughs> and that was, I got to say, <laughs> one of the best things about him. Uh, greed probably was one of the most attractive features of Paul Manafort to a guy like Donald Trump. Because I don't think it was Manafort's smooth... <laughs> ability to uh, address a controversy this clip we've played in the past but it is worth repeating this is when um nora o'donnell on um on cbs this morning this was when when was the date of this this is over the summer obviously when he was the campaign manager um, and uh, this is the way that he responded. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. <laughs> <laughs> that you could almost see Manafort in his brain. It was back in July 27th. You can almost see Manafort like it clocking through his head going, this was a mistake. This was a mistake. I should have just. I should have just accepted that. I should have just. I got 18 mil yeah. instead of like trying to go for the 26 mil. I had multiple apartments. I should have just. God 
Damn it. If Kenny's not going to pay me, it should have been all right. should have been. But that's that's our position, Joe. <laughs> and you know what was great was that in this, you got to real the other, the paradox of Manafort, though, is that he was also the one who came on in the campaign and was like, all right, like, you can't call that kid in the wheelchair a retard. You're going to need to tone down right. racism. Right. <laughs> so he was the one. Who yeah, he was, was also, the adult in the room. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, he, was he was the like, all adult All right, we need to room. pretend to not be bigoted. So the only the other thing I could tell you about Gates, Rick Gates, from what I uh, I know, is that he uh, was like a mini Manafort. Um, he had a I don't know exactly what his position in the in the campaign was, um, working under Manafort, but apparently when Manafort got jettisoned, um, Gates. Because Gates had also been lobbying on behalf of um, the the Ukrainian government and uh, Yanukovych, I think is how we pronounce his name. Um, Gates teamed up or basically ingratiated himself with that guy Barack, the oh, Tom Barrack. Tom Barrack. Oh, yes. that guy. And, the guy was like, and, they, explain to remind everybody he was well, the Barrett entrepreneur. Was, he was one of the character testimonials about Trump at the convention. That's right. And, and he, I can't remember what he uh, what his business is. I think he's involved no, Barrett, in real estate, too. Yeah, he's a real estate guy. I don't think he's just a film producer. And a motivational speaker. And a motivational speaker. And I was that was really came through on his speech. The best part about this, though. Um, so Barrick, when he comes in to meet Trump, brings gates and uh or did i don't know if this is still happening but gates was directly working for tam tom barrack basically following the um it's, it's unclear when sometime the beginning of the year maybe after the um after the election and so this is the best story this is from the, the daily beast this is back in june White House staff noted that his presence, speaking of Gates, was conspicuous since the president didn't even like him. <laughs> Rick, Rick just wandered around, a Republican source familiar with the most recent White House visit told the Daily Beast. My understanding is that Trump had no idea he was in the building. Otherwise, he wouldn't be too happy. OK, Trump still hates him. This is from another GOP source. According to two, this is the best part. According to two former senior Trump uh, campaign officials, Trump's dislike for Gates began as a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> <laughs> for weeks after Gates was hired by the campaign, aides would mention Rick, and Trump would assume that they meant his national political director, Rick Wiley. Not Gates. What a jerk. Wiley was fired over a month just after joining the Trump team. So his aides would be talking about Rick, and he would be like, that guy's still around. I hate that guy. Even though that guy had already been fired. It wasn't until weeks after Gates was hired that Trump, according to one former senior campaign official, saw Gates and asked, who the hell is that? When Trump was informed who Gates was, he remained unimpressed because he still had <laughs> the original disdain for the original Rick. That's so awesome. This is just a new Rick that I hate. It's you just your name is Rick. It's and Rick so, Part Two, and I hate that guy too. That's that fucker that hurt the crowd attendance. I hate that guy. Can can I just total intermediary? Can I just remind you? Can I just remind you that um, only the best people, I only hire the best people. Unless they're Rick, some type of affirmative action program for Ricks. It's totally unfair. Okay, so uh, this is what we have right now. May I just also add Tom Barrick also been accused by Italian authorities of 19 million euros of tax evasion as well. Just, just you know. 
look. That's how it look. This this that's our uh, position, and, uh, and uh, that's, that's what, what we do. That's what they say. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. That's what we. <laughs> I don't know why is he not getting charged with money laundering? The only clip we've played of Tom Barrick is uh, the day before the inauguration. He said Kanye wasn't traditional enough to perform there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You pay taxes with mafia guys in Sardinia, but a black guy at the freaking inauguration? I don't think so. Okay, let's let's talk about Papadopoulos because this might be the most interesting thing. With the Manafort stuff, I feel like they they basically had played it out and they rolled him up. And I don't know to what extent Manafort has. Uh, any involvement beyond his own sort of um, financial improprieties. It's unclear. But the Papadopoulos um, stuff, and like Manafort, maybe it's just, this is just a way for, you know, to get Manafort to, to give up something on Trump. The Trump lawyers don't seem to think that Manafort has anything. But uh, there was also released was a guilty plea for false statements by this guy, George Papadopoulos. This was signed October 5th. It was um, unsealed, I guess, or made public today. And... This is uh, from uh, Marcy Wheeler. The plea makes it clear that one, the campaign had as an explicit goal making friends with Russia. Two, a month and a half before the June 9 Trump Tower meeting, Russian handlers had dangled stolen Hillary emails to Papandopoulos. Apparently, there was a ton of like 20,000 emails were uh, handed over by the uh, Trump campaign. Papandopoulos tried to erase all of his emails. But the, but the thing with emails Beach is... Beach bit. Yeah, here's, the, here's the tricky thing with the emails. People got to keep, keep in mind this. When you send an email, there's two copies. There's your sent one and the one that gets received. Gonna need a lot of bleach bit. How's it? <laughs> it's like that scene. Brain, of, bleach, brain bleach. Bleach it all. We got a Zoolander in it. Okay. So, Throw the computers down. A month and a half before the June 9th Trump Tower meeting, Russian handlers had dangled the stolen emails. Papandopoulos has cooperated beyond what has been laid out in the guilty plea. He learned in early March that he'd be a policy advisor to the Trump campaign. Within weeks, a professor off a trip to Moscow started cultivating him and introduced him to a woman pretending to be Vladimir Putin's niece. <laughs> Only the best people. Uh, Only the best people. Do you remember wait, when Trump would wait, grab... Wait, wait, wait. It's fucking niece. <laughs> They're not the fucking... They can, maybe they can help us give fucking Hillary plutonium shots, man. Let's get a meeting with her. <laughs> Fuck it. Do a. you remember when Trump was asked, like, do you have any foreign policy advisors? And he would just go like, well, yes. Brilliant guy, Carter Page. And another guy of... Uh, Yes, Papadopoulos. I have a low-level energy trader with an anxiety disorder and connections <laughs> to Russian intelligence. I have a confused young man with acne who maybe has a graduate degree and is meeting with Putin's uh, niece. So, okay. yes, the best people. Okay. So after meeting that handler, Papadopoulos attended a meeting with Trump and others where he explained, quote, he had connections that could help arrange a meeting between then-candidate Trump and President Putin. Papadopoulos was to keep the campaign on his out uh, his loop to outreach to Russia. Okay, now Marcy Wheeler then she's tweeting out a month and a half before the June nine meeting. Okay, as a reminder, head of Trump's policy team was Jeff Sessions, who last week repeated under oath he knew nothing about collusion. But Jeff Sessions surely. In March 31st, meeting at which George Papadopoulos talked about setting up a meeting with Putin. <laughs> Empty Wheel says, remember how Sessions said he didn't recall discussing emails with Russians? I'm betting he starts recalling awfully quick. Later in this thread, someone else 
shows Papadopoulos, an image from Instagram with the real Donald Trump, Sessions, and others from March 31st. So maybe there was two different meetings at that point, one in which Jeff Sessions wouldn't have attended because his, I mean, so Jeff Sessions is, is in big, some big trouble here. It seems Wait, to me. we've got a meeting with the czar's niece? She might have some information on that goddamn lesbian bitch Hillary Clinton. They might even have information that might help us purge black people. I was going to say. Rolls. Those uh, Russians are geniuses with technology. What has this got to do with vote suppression? Why? Well, well, whatever. You know, I'm happy to meet with the man's niece, but at some point it's got to turn out with some Mexicans getting deported <laughs> on the other end. So, Eyes on the prize. So Papadopoulos... Um, After learning Russians had emails on Clinton, even before Clinton learned it, so they knew this before this became public, before they were released, Papadopoulos continued to correspond with campaign officials. Uh, In response, the campaign decided to send someone low level so as not to send any signal. It turns out Papadopoulos lied about some of the first time he spoke with FBI on January 27th. For example, he claimed he learned about the emails before he joined the campaign, trying to pretend that he didn't learn about them only because he had just been named top advisor. Uh, <laughs> it's fresh, just this is fresh Marcy, information. This is Marcy Wheeler's analysis. Papadopoulos must be a fucking idiot <laughs> because a number of his communications with Russian handlers were on Skype, a prism provider. <laughs> Though he tried to stop using his communications immediately after his second FBI interview, which is a bit too late. Her favorite part of the plea is this last paragraph. On July 27th, uh, defendant Papadopoulos was arrested upon his arrival at Dulles International Airport. Following his arrest, defendant Papadopoulos met with the government on numerous occasions to provide information answering questions. I'm betting the FBI asked him about this detail from March 31st meeting. Papadopoulos attended a national security meeting in D.C. when then-candidate Trump and other foreign policy advisors for the campaign. This is not in the plea who those people are. Jeff Sessions has got to be feeling a little bit uncomfortable today. The Jews are going to get to me. It's very hot here. The Jews are coming to me. See, I'm a member of a certain secret society. In Washington, D.C., with then-candidate Trump and other foreign policy advisors, when defendant Papadopoulos introduced himself to the group, he stated in some substance that he had connections that could help arrange a meeting between then-candidate Trump and President Putin. How awesome is that, that they're like, we have, you can meet uh, Putin's niece. We have information on Hillary Clinton's that will turn campaign upside down. Awesome. What's your Skype contact? <laughs> Dude, can we, what's uh, the time zone difference? <laughs> and, and this is what Marcy, this is what Marcy speculates here. Because, I mean, look. Everybody's probably read this, you know, a hundred times over. Everybody's now like a like an amateur U.S. attorney. But what they do with these cases is they try and get people to flip. And sometimes, you know, like w- one of the things that I've learned from like my woodworking lessons that I've taken over the years is that the way you build a nice piece of furniture is to build good jigs. It's basically you're building other tools. And at some level, what we're, we're looking at here is really just the, the combination of Papadopoulos and Manafort and the inclusion that the campaign knew about the emails even before it was public suggests that they're just building a lever for something else. It was so, Hillary's fault. Who, I mean, Jeff Sessions could be in big, big, big trouble. I don't like him anyways. He's too short. And, he, and God, and knows what, God knows what uh, Jared and Ivanka, Jared has told them uh, uh, as well. And Bannon. I I'll mean, testify against Jared. He took my girlfriend. <laughs> I don't have. I can only manage to get one hand job a week from my own daughter. I hate that guy. Here's the thing: we don't know if they have uh, interviewed 
Trump yet, right? Do we know? In a certain no, no, no. <laughs> no Do we, we don't know? know. No, we, we don't no know. Idea. And it could be very well that they haven't. But they certainly have interviewed everyone else. Jeff Sessions was, when did he go before Congress? When was that date that he, he, he lied about that? I don't know. He's been before several. No, the most recent time. I mean... I, I suspect that... Um, so maybe around June 10th? No, 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 no. Just He was in, in, in like a month ago. Mm. Uh, Jeff Sessions is going to have some real problems. I think... Oh, was it as recent as October 18th? Yeah, it could very well I'm be. I'm not part of this facade. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you something. Usually when you get questions like that from senators, somebody suggests they ask that question. So... Uh, you could be looking at like this and, and look, the chances of finding some type of specific collusion, although I think like trying to get emails, stolen emails from yeah. a foreign government, <laughs> um, you know, could uh, be considered collusion. But the point is, is that all of these people have lied about it. There's no doubt about it. Right. There's no doubt about it that they have lied. There was nobody who came to the FBI and said, yeah, we actively sought to get these emails from them and they approached us. Wait, you guys are saying there's more than one time zone in Russia? <laughs> this fucking Skype call is going to be super hard to coordinate, but we it's, definitely want the emails, man. There's going to be a couple of people, I think, who are going to be facing, at the very least, false, uh, in, you know, Ask uh, Martha Stewart what happens when you lie to an FBI agent about some of this stuff. I just, yeah. And I should say you don't get, you don't, you don't get, get the, your own know, cable Snoop channel. Dog that's not the way. It, that's fun, not the way it works. Like no. ghost parodies. Not necessarily. Because oh, okay. that would be disturbing. Um, I don't want to see these guys doing. So that. look, that's that's what's what's going on with that. I want to talk about Puerto Rico because uh, that is in some ways much worse. Um, a a. Uh, although, you know, one could argue that, um, well, I mean, all of this uh, basically comes from the Trump administration. But, uh, um, but before we get there, let's just, I want to just go through this Uranium One story because you gotta come this is, uh, yeah, I mean, let's just look at this. This is what you're going to get now. And some people speculate that the reason why Manafort came out with this is because this Uranium One story was was getting too intense, and they needed the deep state needed to throw people off the trail. Wait, Mule, wait, Mueller announced the indictments because a story from 2015 got partially validated in the Hill, and that was going to throw off the slow motion coup that the NSA and the CIA are waging against the guy who, by the way, if we ignore all this nonsense, Look, has given them absolutely everything look, they want if you look at the past two or three weeks the number of you know sort of uh fox news breitbart other sundry youtube channels purporting to have a different ideology um have been doing stories on this uranium one the the here's where the uranium one story came from the uranium story came from and there's been actually really good reporting on this and I think some of it comes from uh, Josh Green and his story that he did on Bannon. But Steve Bannon understood two or three years ago that what he needed to do, and I think uh, I'm paraphrasing, he needed to basically inject the virus into the system. And he knew that because of cutbacks, there was not a lot of investigative reporting that was happening in, in, in mainstream reporting outlets. So he set up this foundation that funded this book called Clinton Cash. And the same guy did one about Jeb Bush as well. Clinton Cash outlined this supposed Clinton scandal that suggested that Hillary Clinton 
took a bribe in the form of a donation to the Clinton Foundation to approve the selling of uranium to the Russian government, a Russian-owned uh, energy company. And the New York Times did a story on this because they made a deal with this foundation that was doing uh, investigative reporting to to uh, cover this stuff. Now, they didn't particularly do a very good job in vetting it. They just basically bought it wholesale. And that was his theory. I mean, really, it was, and there was another part of it just to add to it. He, the other insight that he had that was very astute was not just that there's a major cutback in investigative resources and that on one hand, for the base and for the crazy people, you should be, you know, even more extreme than Limbaugh and push it to the limit. But to hit middle America or whatever that middle is, it should be presented as objective and clinical. Yes. Which is and, very smart. And you can read the Joshua Green piece if you don't want to read the whole book on Bannon. And it outlines this. He talks about how he did this, his machinations. And this piece came out, I don't know, like uh, last summer. And so here is, for example, Judge Janine uh, Pirro. Oh, wait, no, this is about the, her, this clip is about the Trump, uh, the, about the dossier. This is coming out at the same time as the dossier that the Democrat, that, that uh, Clinton, through the campaign, through their lawyer, through GPS, funded the, uh, the, 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 the Trump oppo research. And this matters why? I, I have no That's idea. such a bizarre Some fixation. people claim that that is also Russian collusion, but I think interviewing a couple of Russians... Uh, and thing. paying them for information is not is not quite the same. How about thing. the my wife Russia story? It's the real story of the campaign. But nevertheless, nevertheless, um, let's go through this uranium story because uh, y y if you hear any more of it, you should know what it is before it's sort of like uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the word? Metastasizes in your brain. So. This is around a 2010 uranium uh, deal. Here's uh, Donald Trump. Never seen such r Republican anger and unity as I have concerning the lack of investigation on, on Clinton-made fake dossier. It's not clear that that dossier is fake. Uh, uranium to Russia deal. 33,000 plus deleted emails. Comey fix and instead they looked at phony Trump-Russia collusion, which doesn't exist. <laughs> Dems are using this terrible and bad for our country witch hunt for evil politics. Uh, but the Oz are now fighting back like never before. There's so much guilt by Democrats slash Clinton and now the facts are pouring out. Do something! <laughs> Take to the streets! All right, so... So here's the, uh, the uranium uh, deal. In 2010, there was this Russian nuclear a energy agency called Rosatom. And they bought a controlling stake in a Canadian-owned company that would mine a mining company essentially maybe they had other business called uh uranium one the canadian company had mining licenses for 20 percent of the u.s uranium extraction capacity all right the agreement because it was uh a foreign company had to be signed off by the a, the committee on foreign investment okay there are nine agencies associated with that there were nine members on that committee all of them have to u un uh, um, unanimously approve of it. Clinton did not sit on that committee. There was a representative from the State Department, presumably. The deal also had to be approved by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. 
and then ultimately had to be signed off by Barack Obama. This uranium cannot leave the country. It cannot leave the country. In fact, the only part of the uranium, some of it can go... Um, uranium yellow cake can be processed in Canada before being returned to the United States for use in nuclear power plants. In other words, they just own a financial investment in the domestic to domestic sales of uranium uh, uh, in this country. They don't control our uranium. It's just a business that they're involved in. They could have bought into, I don't know, a car company that was selling cars. The, 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 the donation, it was like a $140 million donation, apparently, given by Frank Juistra, with a G. I may be pronouncing his name. He gave uh, something like $145 million to the Clinton Foundation. He sold his company to Uranium One three years before Uranium One sold, essentially, themselves to the Russian company. He had given that money. I don't know when he gave that money, but he had no interest in Uranium One at the time that he gave that money. Uh, apparently, in 2010, though, Bill Clinton did receive $500,000 from a Russian bank to give a speech at a conference in Moscow, which seems to be just classic Clinton um, cash raking. Well, we can always acknowledge during this whole process that the Clintons, uh, ha of course, did, you know, sat on a board of a private, co of a, you know, internet oh, yes. scam college. Like yes. This. Yeah. Yes. Right. All of this. But the point being that um, the reason why we're discussing this now is because, A, people want to distract from what's going on with Trump make it cloudy, and B, people who are desperate to, in some way, have themselves be perceived as not being lunatics, uh, lunatic dum-dums, uh, keep pushing this as a way of, of trying to, I don't know, make themselves feel better about themselves. The Seth Rich fell through... The pizza hmm. gate, I think, is legit. Though. That's still happening. And um, hmm. all the other stuff. Well, I just want, at a certain point, I was uh, wish my wife would release the kids and let them get on with life, but she won't. Well, it's because she, endless, she can't. She can't. She can't. She can't use the uh, latch <laughs> because of her Parkinson's. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. the only thing that holds off her Parkinson's systems are the children. All right, we're going to take a break. Head into the fun half. Uh, tomorrow, as you know, is uh, Halloween. And um, I don't know if we're going to be doing anything for Halloween or not, but. Um, In a certain sense. Folks. Oh, listen. Gosh, I meant to do this up front. Take our survey. MajoritySurvey.com. If you are a free listener of this program, please. MajoritySurvey.com. If you are a member or if you watch on YouTube, MajoritySurvey.com as well. Go there, click the one that is appropriate for you. Only do one of them, please. Uh, this is a survey that we have uh, constructed. It's not about demographics or anything like that. We really need your help on this survey. Please, MajoritySurvey.com. Also, JustCoffee.coop, fair trade coffee, tea, or chocolate. Use the coupon code MAJORITY, get 10% off. If you buy a craft from Amazon, do so at our link at MajorityReportKickback.com. Also, become a member of the program. Join the Majority Report. Join the Majority Report dot com tomorrow night. The Michael Brooks Show. I can't remember. Somebody had a very funny line about it, like another acronym for it. Yes, yeah, I can't but, remember. What but it was. you were actually going to exercise enough, like you know, slight maturity to just do a straight plug. Yeah, for I once. All right, I'll do a straight plug. It's on tomorrow night at ten. At no, that PM. wasn't a straight plug. It's just boring to do a straight plug. I know. It's boring. It just reflects your... 
Yeah, no, I try. I try yeah. and make it fun. I try to make it but fun. But if you don't want to make it fun, say, fine. It's fun. Like the too much right. masturbation show with Michael. <laughs> I never said that. Ha, ha, ha. I thought that was one of them actually. No, I never said that one. Okay, that doesn't even make sense. Well, in a certain sense, there's none. There's no B. There's no B in that. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm not trained like you to think of. Well, somebody else that came up Stupid. with a very funny one, but forget it. It's yeah. at 7 p.m. tomorrow. I'm night. sure it'll. I'm sure it'll be bombarded with like. It's gonna be really. Different. It's gonna be a fun show. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick break. Thank you, to the first 771 patrons. Mazel tov. Let's keep it moving. Well, I don't think Mazel tov. Yeah, there's not congratulations. Someone would say that to you. Well, I'm congratulating them on their <laughs> smart decision to get with the program. Six four six two five seven thirty nine twenty is the number. We'll be right back. No, no. 